Hi, welcome to Christensen Wealth Management. I'm Michael Christensen and I'm on the beach of Marco Island, Florida today. I wanted to record a short video and give you an update on what has changed since my last video a little over a week ago. The stock market has begun to roll over to the downside as I had expected in my previous video and the volatility index has shot up about 100% in about a week since that video was made. We went from a volatility index or a VIX rating of 11 all the way up to 23. And with that we had several uh, surges to the downside of the Dow Jones Industrial Average of down 400 points, down 500 points, and I don't think it's over yet because the China trade talks with the United States do not appear to be doing very well. They appear to be breaking down and both um, the Trump administration and the Chinese government are definitely digging in their heels and do not appear very willing to um, negotiate um, a compromise, I guess you could say. So with all of that said, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into the charts so uh, I can give you some meaningful material for the next week. Enjoy the view behind me here and uh, I will be back again in about seven days. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the charts. I'll do the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. Here is an 18 month chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average and you can see the big drop that we had from October down to Christmas here in the following rally. And the problem that I see is that we were not able to get to a new all time high before this thing started to roll over last week. I'll draw a couple lines in there to represent those prior highs. And you can see that as we rallied up since Christmas, we got right to the January 2018 high and then just began to roll over quite significantly. We dropped about 650 points since we tagged that January 2018 high right here. We did not make it back to the October uh, 2018 high, so that means we made a lower low and we have a failure. So I would recommend extreme caution because this Dow Jones Industrial Average is looking like it has officially broken the uptrend since Christmas. I'll draw a couple things in there to represent those uptrends. If we draw a line from the close down here at Christmas up to this low of late March, you can see that we broke it in April, rallied up a few times to touch it from underneath, and then we just rolled over and dropped that 650 points. And we'll see how much lower we go, but it looks to me like the trend is broken for the Dow. And I think uh, there's a good chance that we are headed lower since we were not able to uh, break and stay above the January and October highs. Here is an 18 month chart of the S&P 500 stock index. And this too has also failed to hold its uh, highs here. It did make a record high back a few weeks ago, late April, early May, uh, breaking above the September 2018 high, but it has since rolled over and begun to fail, and it should close on May 13th below the high of January, and below, uh, obviously it is below these highs again. If it closes back below the high of January, then we'll have a failure to hold the two prior highs and that is not a very good sign for the S&P 500. Um, I'll go ahead and draw in a few of the trend lines here. I drew in the rising bearish wedge pattern that had formed since basically January 1st, it looks like, or mid-December, depending on which line you choose, the red one on the top or the bottom. I had mentioned in my last video that the wedge would likely resolve to the downside and we got up to make a new all-time high just in time to roll right over and drop 650 points on the Dow. In the case of the S&P, we're down about 60 or 65 points. But this bearish, or for those of you who don't know terminology in investing, bearish is not good. That is um, the likely situation when the stock market is going down. 
and bullish is when we are going up. So we had a bullish uh, trend, but a bearish pattern, and then it broke and turned into a bearish sell-off. So right now, be careful with this S&P 500 because it looks like there's a very good chance that we will fail to hold the January high and the September October highs of 2018. This chart of the S&P 500 is 11 years and six months long going back to late 2007 and in my opinion this is the most ominous chart of the S&P uh, because it shows that the trend since the low of 2009 has been broken and you can see right here at the low of 2009 as represented by that red circle you project that forward and you connect it to this low of 2016 you can then project that forward and capture the lows in here of April 2018 and then we broke that in September and October 2018 and we rallied up a few times hit that line from underneath failed uh, with a big sell-off into Christmas and now all we have appeared to have done is we have rallied up since Christmas tagged that line one more time from underneath which is not uh, it's simply a retest of the pre prior highs and a retest of this nine and a half year trend line and now we're beginning to roll over again so the same type of pattern occurred in 2000 and in 2008 and I would just say that if this market, if this S&P 500 continues to sell off like it, like it is, then this nine year trend is broken and we could come back down and retest those Christmas lows, which would be about a 15 to 20% drop from here. So caution on the S&P long term chart because we have clearly broken the nine-year trend and we have to be open to the possibility of a uh, downtrend for the remainder of 2019. In this chart provided by Bank of America Merrill Lynch Global Investment Strategy, this shows how much investment money is pouring into or out of stocks. In this case it's called equity fund flows. And since the start of 2019, you can see that the title of this chart is we have had the worst start for equity or stock fund flows since 2008. As the stock market has been going higher this year since January 1st, Bank of America Merrill Lynch clients have sold off $116 billion worth of stocks. And you can see that that is in quite a significant contrast to this blue line from 2018, which was a surge of buying, and 2017, which was a huge surge of buying of $295 billion. Well, looks like many of the investors at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, are selling this stock market rally and selling it quite significantly because this 151 billion down here that was for the year of 2016 we've already sold off at in this chart 116 billion and it's only been about four months or maybe a little over four months depending on the timeline of this chart so this is a sign of significant bearishness from some of the big private clients at Bank of America Merrill Lynch. This last chart was provided to me by Sven Heinrich of North Man Trader and this is a chart of the S&P 500 earnings per share estimates and from the second quarter of 2019. In blue or light blue you can see the S&P 500 price and you can see in black is the earnings per share estimates for the S&P 500. So one of the reasons for my high level of caution in my commentary is the fact that the earnings per share of the S&P 500 companies has been in decline since about September 2018. We just keep slowly sinking lower and lower. 
but yet you can see that the stock market has shot up since Christmas based on this S&P 500. Huge rally since Christmas that we're starting to fade and start to come back down now. But ultimately, earnings are what drive stock prices and you can see that the earnings are slowly falling. So that is my last chart of the day that is meant to just reinforce my recommendation of caution. Thank you again for watching. Before you go, please remember to like or follow this social media page if you are on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. And if you're on YouTube, please click the subscribe button or, well, and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified whenever additional videos are posted. I'll be back again in about seven days to make another video. And in the meantime, I recommend just stay cautious and let this market do what it wants to do. Because getting back to even is not an investment strategy. And if you lose 10, 20, 30, or even 50% on your investments, it can take years to get back to even. And yes, the market does come back over time, always has. But the time you spend waiting for your investments to return to where they were, that time never comes back. So right now, just remain cautious, and I'll see you again in about another week. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.